Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we will unlock the book The Emperor of All Maladies. When someone mentioned cancer, presumably nobody asked them to introduce the word. Cancer is a term for an aggressive, hard-to-cure disease. People with cancer face not only a huge financial burden but often also a death sentence. According to data released by the World Health Organization, in 2015, 8.8 million deaths were attributable to cancer globally, and nearly one-sixth of all deaths were caused by cancer. In the United States, one in three women and one in two men will develop cancer in their lifetime. What kind of disease is cancer? Can cancer be completely cured? The Emperor of All Maladies will help answer these questions. Guiding us through the history of the struggle between humans and cancer, the book reveals the origin of cancer and the development of cancer treatments. At the same time, it paints a colorful picture of humanity, telling us stories of patients, researchers, and activists in their personal battles against cancer. The author of this book Siddhartha Mukherjee is an Indian-American physician, scientist, writer, cancer specialist, and associate professor of Columbia University Medical Center. He wrote this book to answer a question asked by his patient, who was battling a severe abdominal cancer. Her cancer had relapsed and she had to go through another treatment. At some point, the patient said, well, I'm willing to go on, but in order to go on I need to know what it is I'm battling. The author took six years to study the historical events, professional literature, media reports, patient interviews, and a host of other materials to answer her question, and ended up writing this book. Next, we'll deconstruct this book for you in three parts. Part 1, What Exactly is Cancer? Part 2, Cancer Treatment and Prevention. Part 3, Two Important Figures in the History of Cancer Resistance. Let's start with Part 1, What Exactly is Cancer? In your experience, does it ever occur to you that cancer has suddenly appeared more frequently or even exploded in recent years? You might be surprised to learn cancer did not appear all of sudden, and it has a very long history. A description of cancer has been found from as early as 2500 BC in an ancient Egyptian text, bulging tumor of the breast. Touching them is like touching a ball of wrapping. For treatment, the ancient volume states, there is none. Around 500 BC, Atasa, a 36-year-old Persian queen suffered from stage 3 breast cancer. She wrapped her cancerous breast with a cloth to hide it, but eventually, in a fit of foresighted anger, asked her slaves to cut off her breasts with a knife. Besides written records, pathologists have found cancer in ancient corpses preserved for thousands of years, the oldest of which is a case of abdominal cancer from Egypt in 400 AD. In 168 AD, the Greek doctor Claudius Galen inferred the cause of the oncological disease. He believed that cancer was a mass formed by the condensation of black bile. Galen believed that even if surgery was done to remove a tumor, black bile would flow back to the original place, so surgical resection of the tumor was not a permanent cure. After Galen's death, his theory of black bile carcinogenesis influenced the medical world for more than a thousand years. So many doctors believed that it was best not to perform surgery to remove a tumor. To some extent, Galen inadvertently did a good deed for later generations, because his medical conditions were primitive at that time, with rusty scalpels and absence of anesthetics and antibiotics, surgery often endangered the patient's life. As you can see, cancer has been around since time immemorial, but there is also little documentation of cancer, mainly because it is an age-related disease. The higher the age of a person, the higher the probability of getting cancer. In ancient times, the average life expectancy of humans was short, and they were also threatened by diseases, such as plague, smallpox, cholera, and tuberculosis, which meant that people often died before they got cancer. And even when they got cancer, it was often accompanied by the onset of various other diseases which obscured the presence of cancer. In the 19th century, 
the discovery and spread of antibiotics changed the face of public health and disease treatment. The incidence of diseases such as typhoid fever, tuberculosis, and smallpox was decreasing, but the number of deaths from cancer climbed. In the United States, from 1900 to 1916, the mortality rate of cancer increased by 29.8%, slightly higher than that of tuberculosis. By 1926, cancer had become the second most common cause of death in the United States, after heart disease. People often attribute the cause of cancer to the transition of civilization, and it is believed that the rush and disorder of modern life stimulate pathological changes in the body. But actually, it is the advancement of civilization that prolongs people's lifespan, and thus exposes cancer. With the surge in the incidence of cancer, people began to study the pathogenesis of the disease. In the 1850s, most scientists believed that cancer was the inflammatory response of the immune system to a damaged tissue, which caused cells to proliferate and led to the generation of malignant cells. For example, the death of a patient with leukemia was attributed to an abscess or infection by doctors. It was pathologist David Paul von Hansemann who first saw that chromosomes in cancer cells had abnormal shape, unlike those in normal cells. He then proposed that the real aberration occurred on the structure of the chromosomes inside cancer cells, suggesting that it was the cancer cells themselves that caused the problem. But von Hansemann could not prove whether the, the abnormal shape of the chromosomes were the cause or effect of cancer. Following this, Theodore Boveri carried out an experiment on urchin eggs, and observed cells that had abnormal chromosomes failed to develop. He thus concluded that chromosomes carried crucial information for normal cell development and growth. Then he extended this conclusion to the cause of cancer, proposing a bold theory that chromosomal abnormalities are the cause of the pathological growth of cancer. Around the same time, Peyton Rouse of Rockefeller College discovered that cancer in chickens was caused by a virus, later called Rouse sarcoma virus. This was seen a contradiction to the theory proposed by Boveri. Viruses are pathogens, foreign invaders, while chromosomes are internal entities of the human body. Surely these two opposing entities could not be the cause of the same disease. As such, at the beginning of the 20th century, scientists' views on the mechanism of cancer still wobbled between viruses and chromosomes. Before all the dispute about the origin of cancer, in the 1860s, Gregor Mendel had published his P. Experiment Inheritance Theory. The theory holds that genetic traits are transmitted by independent information packets, and organisms transmit instructions from a cell to offspring by transferring these information packets. Botanists later called this unit a gene. Then, in 1915, there was a breakthrough in genetic research by embryologist Thomas Hunt Morgan, namely the discovery that chromosomes contain genes. Morgan's student George Beadle together with a biochemist Edward Tatum, would later discover that genes provide the instructions to synthesize proteins, the workhorse performing the majority of cellular functions. However, although the inner working of a normal cell was better understood by then, scientists still couldn't agree on the origin of cancer. In 1958, Howard Temin succeeded in growing cancer on a petri dish by adding Rouse sarcoma virus to a layer of healthy cells. Subsequently, Temin observed that the virus altered the genetic makeup of the cells, which was a big aha moment that answered the big question of the origin of cancer. This finding however couldn't convince the scientific community. Finally, in 1970, Temin was able to prove that that cancer was caused by genetic mutations, which could be induced by virus infection. This was the unifying explanation of the origin of cancer. In a normal cell, robust genetic circuits regulate cell division and death. But in a cancer cell, these circuits have been broken due to genetic mutations, causing cells to constantly grow unrestricted. A normal cell dies or stops growing at some point, but a cancer cell due to its mutated genes, can divide, grow, and metastasize forever, destroying other tissues, invading other organs, and expanding to distant sites of the body. This genetic mutation can occur in a variety of different cells in our body, so cancer is not a term for one disease. Instead, it's a collective term for many diseases, 
such as leukemia, breast cancer, gastric cancer, lung cancer, and so on. We refer to them collectively as cancer. Once cancer cells begin to grow abnormally, they will seize the living space and all the energy required by other normal cells to grow. Once cancer cells invade the human body, they push our body to its physiological limit, causing each system of our body to operate like walking on the razor's sharp edge, eventually moving towards death. That's all for the first part. Let's recall some key points of this part. Cancer has a long history with records dating as far back as 2500 BC. However, there was not much documentation on cancer in the ancient times, mainly due to the short lifespan of ancient humans, as well as the presence of symptoms of other diseases, such as plagues, smallpox, and pneumonia, which obscured the onset of cancer. In the 19th century, along with the development of civilization and the progress of medical science, humans' lifespan began to extend, and cancer gradually became one of the main causes of death. After research by generations of scientists, it was finally recognized that cancer is a result of genetic mutations. These mutations cause cells to grow abnormally, divide indefinitely, and then invade various organs of the human body, ultimately leading to death. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.